folks, this is Duke Frazier. And back here in the Black Hills, it's means hunting season's coming on. For some of us, that means it's time to break out the muzzle loaders. If you're new to muzzle loading hunting, this video will give you some tips on how to have a very successful hunt. Hunting with muzzle loaders can be a challenging and enjoyable experience for both new and long time shooters alike. Before you begin your muzzle loader hunt, be sure to read, follow, and understand all the rules and regulations for the area you plan to hunt in. In some states, muzzle loading season is for traditional firearms, meaning that they must have an external ignition such as with a flint lock or cap lock. During muzzle loader season, you may also be restricted to using only patch and round ball. If you are unsure of what the rules and regulations are for your area, contact your local wildlife management office. Probably the most aggravating thing that can happen on a muzzleloader hunt is a hang or misfire. This happens when the main charge either delays an ignition or fails to ignite altogether. While this is more common in flint locks, it can happen with cap locks as well. One cause may be residual oil left in the barrel from the last cleaning, and this is probably the most common. Another is a result of moisture buildup from temperature variation. Taking a gun from a warm car or house to the cold outdoors will cause the metal to sweat, which can foul your powder charge. The best way to avoid this is to let your gun sit outside for 10 to 15 minutes before loading it. Firing a cap by itself will help ensure the chamber is dry. Just like in the days of the 18th and 19th century, muzzleloader hunting has not changed much in the present. To successfully use your muzzle loader, you need some key items. All muzzle loaders require powder, patch, and ball in order to function. Cap locks require the addition of the percussion cap. These items, as well as other tools you might need, are kept in the possibles bag. Your individual preference will decide on the other tools that you will keep in your possibles bag. Items that I keep in my possibles bag include percussion caps and capper, patch material and grease, ball starter, pocket knife, screwdriver, vent pick, nipple wrench, powder measure, and alcohol swabs. If going on a short day hunt close to home, I may add a small powder horn and deerskin ball bag. Loading your muzzle loader is a simple process but requires your full attention. To start off with, Take your powder horn and powder measure to create the charge. Once your charge is made, pour it down the barrel. Next, you need a patch and ball. Patches should be lubricated, either by saliva or grease. If using a heavy patching material, such as pillow ticking, grease should be used. Once you have the material lubricated, place it over the muzzle with a ball. Start the ball into the barrel, and cut away the excess patching material with a patch knife. Use the ball starter to start the ball down the barrel. The ramrod is used to finish seating the ball. It is very important to make sure to seat the ball tightly against your powder charge. Failure to do so can result in a burst barrel and injury or death. The last step in the loading process is to place a cap on the nipple. And at this point, the gun is ready to fire. When at the range, I prefer to wipe the barrel between shots with an alcohol swab. This helps reduce residue buildup and helps maintain accuracy. Before going on a hunt, you should spend a considerable amount of time at your local shooting range to know where your muzzle loader hits and make adjustments as needed. When properly sighted, Muzzle loading rifles can be very accurate. It is also important to try different loads to find out what works best in your gun. Well, I hope you found these tips helpful. 
when it comes to planning your next muzzleloader hunt. As old timers always say, keep your powder dry.